it comes at an age when I will, you know, that's almost like the birds and the bees talk, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Queasy Rich, but uh, that's dope that you even know about Queasy Rich. How you know about Queasy Rich? Today we have a very special guest. He's been in the game for a decade plus now. Multiple hits to his name, influenced uh, so many artists that it'd be hard to, to name and count. And uh, he's gone through a lot of trials, tribulations, and maintains the, the good energy, maintains the good music. And he's yeah. back with more new music. It'll be out by the time you watch this. Rich Holmes yes, sir. Welcome to Hip Hop Dance, how you feeling? Oh uh, man, I'm feeling blessed, man. You know what I'm saying? How you feeling? I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. We were, we were just talking off camera about yeah. how you wake up feeling grateful every day. And every you day. Pray in the morning. Yeah, I pray in the morning. Is, is, that, um, is that a mindset you've had your whole life? Um, No, it's not a mindset I've had my whole life, man. But throughout our, uh, these last 10 years, man, I'm blessed and I've just Really like got a relationship with God where I'm able to pray every day and other, and you know him. He understands me, so nah, man. About the last three, four years, every day that's my routine. Wake up, pray, smoke. What's the last thing you prayed for? What's the last thing I prayed for? Oh man, just for waking up, just waking up, just being alive. Well, then, there's some people that didn't wake up, so that's the biggest blessing. Yeah, and it's uh, it's taken for granted so often that sometimes just a reminder to. To breathe and, and be present is uh, yeah you know just, you know just a, a blessing to make it home you know I think a lot of people take that for granted like you know what I mean coming home every day or even if you got a spouse or a woman like you know sometimes these females get uh, comfortable <laughs> and uh, you know they don't appreciate just how much of a blessing it is for you to come home every night and with someone being a rapper like you know it's critical. Well, you have the song, Risk Takers. I was wondering what the biggest risk that you've taken in your life has been. Uh, the biggest risk I've taken in my life uh, would probably have been uh, taking time away from my family. You know what I mean? Not being able to be home, uh, missing a lot of moments, birthdays, uh, uh, focusing on something bigger and hoping that my family will understand that. It's a bigger picture, and it's, uh, I'm not grinding for now. I'm grinding for later. Mm. You know what I mean, so that's the biggest risk. Uh, Do you think that uh, over the course of time they've understood and they see what the grind is for, though? Um, now, of course, they understand what the grind is because you got to think. I started a while back, and my kids were a lot younger. You know, uh, with them getting older, them knowing who their father is, like. I care about that. I care about when they Google me and what pops up. So I'm pretty sure they, they understand the sacrifice is, is worth it. Do they know about Queasy Rich? Uh, <laughs> that's crazy. Man. That's dope. That's dope. Uh, I, I haven't told them the story about Queasy Rich yet. You know what I mean? Uh, it comes at an age when I will, you know, that's almost like the birds and the bees talk. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Queasy Rich, but uh, that's dope that you even know about Queasy Rich. How you know about Queasy Rich? I was doing uh, some digging into your story, and I like to know about the character of a person before they walk in, so I know it's important to them. Uh, I can tell that the, the grind and the journey of where you came from is important to you. Yeah, that's dope, man. They made me like the interview a whole lot more, just even know that you were that in tune or you, that, you did that homework because Queasy Rich, that character in my life, uh, changed my life. Uh, if it wasn't for Queasy, Queasy Rich, uh, well, there wouldn't be no Rich Homie Corn today. Well, what do you think the most impactful moment was from that time period that kind of led to where you're at today? Um, the most impactful moment of being Queasy Rich or in that time frame would have been uh, being locked up. That's when I got the name. And having 32 inmates around me locked up from rape to murder to burglary, which I, which uh, is what I was in for. And just turning that whole dorm to Queasy Rich fans. You know what I'm saying? So when they gave me the confidence knowing like if I could turn some of the hardest men in the world around, I mean, if I could turn some of the hardest men in the world to become fans, I know I could do it to the world. And it wasn't just straight rapping either. Like there was a lot of melody involved. There was song. So to yeah. do that in that environment, it's almost even more validating. Of, okay, if I can do it in here, here when I get out there, I know I can do it. But at the same time, it took me a little minute to adjust to the free world. Mm -hmm. 
because in jail a lot of my songs were like jail songs so yeah i had to get back you know adjusted to the free world and it took a minute it took what's a minute. something that people don't, like we talked about being grateful for breathing and being alive but what's yeah. something that you took for granted that when you got out of jail you didn't realize how important it was to you uh something i took for granted that i didn't know that would be so special to me or even something i would you know think about was grabbing a drink of water uh, on my own time a drink of water like water free like without scheduled water yeah breaks. like yeah like that was just crazy or, or even like not being able to eat when you want to eat or a light staying on all night you can't cut the light off just little stuff, man. You just be, I'd be, I'd be grateful for now. Is the one place you'd recommend to eat still pizza bar in Camp Creek? Say it again. So if you had to recommend one place to eat, is it still the pizza bar in Camp Creek Parkway? Uh, if I had to recommend anywhere, it would still be the uh, pizza bar. It's <laughs> not on Camp Creek anymore, but I like, I like Nancy's Pizza as well now too. Yeah. I like Nancy's Pizza, and but. In LA, if you're in LA, Barry's Pizza is the spot to eat. Barry's, Barry's, the lobster pizza. Barry's is fire. Uh, Jordan is on the camera right now. We have a rule though in LA. It's the three B's that you don't eat at after a certain time. What what is it? Barry's, Vinny Bachi, Boston Over. Yeah. Yeah, those are the three in LA that you stay away from after 1 a.m. Oh, after 1 a.m. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> that, okay, we're good, we're good. good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but berries, man, I love berries, man. And lobster pizza got something to do. Lobster pizza is fire. Okay, so you, you get out of jail, you're yeah. rapping, you're eating when you want, you're drinking water when you want. Yeah. What's the first moment in that time period where you start to gain some real recognition or somebody reaches out and you start to realize, okay, I can actually really start um i would say around the time when i first got out of jail i ran into this uh this guy the name of tz um it was just the way he believed in me made the way he believed in me more than i believed in myself just gave me so much confidence you know what i'm saying and then um coming out of jail living in a, a, a garage uh my mom i didn't have a bedroom so the garage i, just, I transitioned to the garage but i still had a studio set up and it was just more so of the confidence that uh, TZ had in me that made me believe in myself a whole a, a little bit more. And were you like dropping songs? Were you sending it to people? How how were you getting your music heard by people at that point? Um, at that at that moment, I was getting my music heard by people by uh just like I would do a song, I would go to the strip club in Atlanta the same night just to see like the reaction I would get, or even just to see how my mix would sound because I was still recording myself. So it was just like critiquing myself and wanting to make myself better. You know what I mean? So I would definitely go to the strip club. Was there a song that really went off at the strip club that you knew was a hit? Um, and no, it wasn't a song that just automatically went off, but it was just the reactions the girls would give me. I don't know, because I wasn't throwing any money. It was just more the reaction, like the girls were dancing and let me know like I might got something. So that ba that definitely boosted my confidence a whole lot. People don't realize strippers are actually, especially in Atlanta, the greatest A and R's in the game. They are responsible for a lot of the hits to come out of that city. You know, like, <laughs> and that's part of it. That's part of the Atlanta culture. Like, we take it to the strip club first. Yeah. If they can dance to it without you throwing money, you may have something. And but more importantly, if they request it, yeah. it's about requesting it. You know what I mean? I feel like a, a stripper is gonna dance to anything that a dude throws money to. But when she goes to requesting it. It's a different feeling. And so you had the confidence, you had the music, you had the strippers. Who was the first industry person that reached out to you and brought you into the fold? The first industry person that reached out to me, I can't say the first person that reached out to me. The first per the first industry person that gave me recognition, Meek Mill. Yeah, and this before this before some type of way, you feel me? So Meek Mill like said a tweet. Uh, like song, I had a song called Choices. He made a tweet about the song Choices, and I thought that was the biggest shit in the world at the time. Do you remember where you were, like what your initial reaction was? I was on the road. I was on the road because I was already on the road some type of way. Hadn't came out, but I was still accumulating money on the road every weekend. And one of my buddies told me, and I thought like that was like 
But it's me. I think after that, we might have started listening to, uh, I used to pray for times like this, to rhyme like this. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, you know what I'm saying? So it was one of the moments. That's crazy. Did you link up with him in the studio after that? Uh, of course, of yeah. course. I've definitely linked with me more than one time. You know what I mean? And then when was the first time you were introduced to like the Cash Money crew? Um, the first time I was introduced to the Cash Money crew was with, uh, was through Thug. Uh, after we did the uh, Get the Fuck Out My Face track, was the first song me and Thug ever recorded. And it might have been like three months after that, Thug introduced me to Bird. You know what I mean? After Thug introduced me to Bird, Bird booked the studio for three months. Um, and Rich Gang was born, and it was definitely a moment that we would never forget. No, that was who. Who were all of the official members of Rich Gang? I know there were some people that um, came out, but yeah, but I, I can't tell you who the official. I just know like at the time, like it was just me and Thor because it was it was more of a revamp Rich Gang. Yeah, it wasn't the, like the Tiger, the Wayne, and now nah, it was just more like the the new generation Rich Gang. It was just me and Thor. That's all it was. We ain't need no extras. Okay, so I've, I've always been curious. And Bird, of course. And Bird. And when, did, when did you and Thug first meet? Like, what was your first interaction before? Um, our, first, our first interaction was before, uh, right when I signed with T.I.G. Um, he was signed with Gucci at the time. And Gucci was trying to sign me. So Gucci had a studio of more than in, in Memorial in Atlanta. And that's this. It was the first time I met Migos as well. You know what I'm wow. saying? R.I.P. to take off. Like we would all be upstairs in this one room on the couch, and Gucci would have songs. He had like three different rooms, you know. So I had met Thug then, but the first song we recorded was "Get the Fuck Out My Face." Gucci doesn't get enough credit for being an A and R too. There's the strippers that are the A and R's in the Listen, Gucci's. So Gu you had Migos, yourself, Thug, all in this. Pee Wee Longway. Uh, Pee Wee, you got Pee Wee Longway, Dolph. Dolph was there before. Dolph was who we had. all of us, and it's like, and Gucci is gonna kidnap you, and I kidnap you like kidnap you, but you leave till yeah, it's on my butt. Like he gonna get you in. You gonna do at least ten songs before you are able to go home. How does it work? Is it like multiple? Like all right, there's a producer in each room, and they're just sending out tracks, or how? Do, how do you decide uh, who goes on which one? He got the producer, and they're not sending out tracks. He got different producers pulling up. He had like three rooms in the house. Like he may have, uh, he may have done deal upstairs. He may have honorable C note in the other room, and you know what I mean. Different, you know, and sometimes hey, come on, come in here right quick. Yeah. Was that was DJ Drama there too, or was that a different time period? Uh, DJ Drama wasn't there. Uh, DJ Drama was a different time period. You know what I'm saying? DJ Drama came a little bit after Gucci. Gucci was like in the beginning, like in the beginning, beginning before some type of way. Yeah, that's so. And then with some type of way, when was the first moment that? Either like you heard it on the radio, or you heard it blasting in cars, or you knew that this song was out of here. The first time I knew it was out of here, uh, I did this show in Cincinnati, and this was like just before the song come out. And my uncle Meat, and he's he's I would say he's a, he's he's hard on me on music. Like it could be better. Like one of my you know biggest critics, which I love. He's not a yes man. And when I did the song, he was like, "Bro, I think this the one." And I've never been the one to pick none of my hits. Uh, none of my biggest songs. I just go in the studio and I try to create great music, or good music to my ear or something I would want to hear. And before I went on in Cincinnati, I was like, I'm going to try to, I want this to be my come on song because with me and my DJ, we always have a Q song. So this Q song, this particular night, the Q song was going to be some type of way. And when I played it, like the reaction I got from the crowd was like, I had never saw that before. And I was like, I think that's the one. I, I wanted to get your reaction to this too, because this was, I feel like, such a crazy moment um, in time but, uh, where, like, the reaction was so far beyond you, but this was at the uh, the Rose Bowl. Yeah, well, I remember. And you, you in the in the crowd, or in yeah. the locker room. Yeah. Because they, 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 right, they had made it their official, like, winning song. Yeah. And then when did you kind of catch wind of of that, and like, how did they invite you into the locker room? Uh, what's the dude from Georgia, Darquez, what's his name that? Darquez, Darquez Dinner. He's from the, uh, he's from, uh, he's from Georgia, not from Atlanta, a small town in Georgia, and it was his favorite song. So, um, I remember, uh, yeah, Michigan, I remember Michigan State reaching out, asking was I available for the Rose Bowl, and, 
We was available. And you were available. This is this what happened. You. Like that brain bag is so many memories. And I think uh, the coach was so lost. Like he didn't know. Like he was like, but if they like it, I love it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you see him like hopping yeah. up and down and stuff. And they had me in the middle, and like, man, that bring back so memory, so many memories. What year was that? What, 15 to 14? Yeah, I think it was 2014. And then they push you on the side just so they could get their dances in. Yeah. And, and they won. I think and they, so. Yeah, this is after the win. Yeah, I, I might have been a good luck charm. Listen. And I, I remember me and my dad driving up there. We was a little late. I think we might have we might have arrived at halftime, and they was and the thing was was can we get them on the uh, get them on the field? So they got me on the field. You know, I feel like it was like the finals. They put a hat on me. You know what I'm saying? You got you got a hat like the hat. They like come back to the uh, come back to the locker room. And to this day, uh. Dark Quest, I've, I've, I've had a relationship with him. I got judges with him in my house. He's in the NFL. And it's just like relationships you create, man. You know what I'm saying? That, that, that are priceless moments that I never forget. It's crazy how it, just to see it build and build. You just show me God real. That's all, man. There, there's one random song that I've always been curious about, and more relevant now because of what he's doing in TV, but the song you have with Lil Dicky, yeah. where he, you know, he's trying to save money, so yeah. he gets you on half a verse. Yeah. Did he pitch that to you at the beginning? Is this the idea, or did you just send an actual verse and he did that afterwards? So, Little Dicky, <laughs> he doesn't get as much credit as he deserves. Like, he paid me for a whole verse. But like his mind, he reminds me like of a Kanye, and I say that in a in a good way, not yeah. Kanye like the, like not yeah, yeah. Kanye Kanye, but visionary Kanye, perfectionist Kanye. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like so now, like it was his idea. He pulled up to my house to shoot it, but he paid me like my full price. Well, but the what way was the price of the time? Uh, <laughs> yeah. So 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 so. He so didn't the, save money on the actual verse. No, nah, he didn't say money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't no discount. Good Quan, what does this have to do with saving money, though? You know what? A full verse would have been too expensive anyways. But yeah, but but like the way like his mindset, like the way he was like his creative control. I learned so much from him in that little time we spent together. You know what I'm saying? Because when he first sent it, I was like, I didn't know who no little yeah, dicky you was. Didn't know he wasn't. I did. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. And and nothing against little dicky because man, I fell in love with him. Man, it's like one of my hip hop friends, like a good friend with a, good, a great heart and loves what he do and he's genuine about what he do and he pushes all and everything. Like he can mess up on a tone and he's mad. Like, I didn't say it right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because I didn't think we want we, we did something like on live TV. I don't know. I forgot which. I don't know what it was. Might have been Jimmy Kimmel or something like that. He was so mad. I was like, bro, you, you killed it. I messed up on this one part. He was so mad. So I love the like the the love he put in it, the heart, the, like he put his all in it. So I learned that from him. Like, if you're gonna do it, give it your all. If not, so, go home. So you okay, so he was in the studio with you and then you were about to record a full verse and then he was like, No, actually I'm just gonna No, we wasn't in the studio. It was sent like via email. Okay. I sent back like a full verse, like <laughs> I was kind of sick, like, bro, I start going in right there, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, come on, hold on, wait, we're going to cut it. But I love the creativity of it, and it was, like, just so dope. And it just showed me, like, he's musically inclined, and he takes it serious. No, shout out to Lil Dicky. No, I definitely shout out Lil Dicky. We were talking about people giving it their all. I also wanted to get your reaction on this, because uh, I've never seen any sort of DJ give it their all vocally, like your yeah. DJ did when... Uh, DJ Fresh. On the lifestyle. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. So, in the moment, do you hear that in the background? Like, he's really getting it, or did you yeah. know still have it? I, I definitely heard it. I was like, bro, you got to chill a little bit, bro. <laughs> You singing better than me on the motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? Like, but nah, nah, nah. It was definitely a moment we laughed at, man. You know what I'm saying? Shout out DJ Fresh, man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, but he definitely took my moment that night. <laughs> he definitely took my moment that night. And like, he's still viral to this day because of that. It's so funny. 
Like, you know, but now like he's on the road, he's DJing for uh, Nicki Minaj, Future, like so like, you know, you just see you just see people. That's how but it's about it Bobby. Yeah, really yeah definitely. <laughs> Shout out to Corn for the moment. <laughs> Shout out to Corn. I've always wondered what you were saying on on you know, when you were talking about on lifestyle, you said then 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 like yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. you <laughs> that, Yeah, so that was shit there. Yeah, that wasn't me on that part, it was still stuck. <laughs> so yeah, but I can tell you what it says, say like, uh did a lot of shit just to live this here lifestyle. Uh <laughs> this is the part. No, this ain't the part. And it came straight from the bottom to the top of my lifestyle. Nigga living the nigga living the nigga living and living like a beginning, but I don't know what. I don't wait, I don't wait. I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. I got it. Okay. And I'm living and living like a beginning, I don't wait, I don't wait. I'm trying to get in like performance See, mode. I'm trying to get in performance okay. mode, so hold on, hold on. Okay, okay. Did a lot of shit just to live this here lifestyle. Yeah. And it came straight from the bottom to the top of my lifestyle. Nigga living, living like beginning. Then I don't know what he said. <laughs> I know it when I said, it, but it's. Uh, we'll pull out the actual lyrics on the yeah. back. But it was amazing because it was the first song. But he said, they're, they're actually words. They're yeah, actually I, words. <laughs> they're actually words. And I, and I know I'm like, this is just like, I don't know, like a brain fart. Because I know I'm like, I just did the song three days ago in Detroit. <laughs> but like, I know it, but like, yeah, it's like, I need a little more Casamigo. Yeah, okay. Right. We'll come back to the end of the interview. It's yeah. funny though, it's like one of the first songs where everyone was singing every word and knowing the words. Yeah, yeah. You know, I knew the words. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was the beginning of something new. It was, it, the, the other thing that people don't know about that song besides the words is that Soldier Boy was actually in the music video? Yes, he eating was. A pop, he's eating a popsicle yeah. in the back. How did how did he end up here? And what <laughs> what was he like on set that day? Uh, uh, Soldier Boy was cool on set that day. He was um uh, we shot it in Miami, Florida, and like Bird just called everybody. Like Bird called everybody. You know, Soldier pulled up. He's probably the first rapper to pull up. He <laughs> probably was the first rapper to pull up. But nah, man, Soldier always show love, man. Soldier, you know what I'm saying? I, 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 I fool with Big Soldier. Soldier had an influence too, like on me growing up. Just like young, like someone around my age, showing it, it can be done. Yeah. Definitely gave me like confidence or the, uh, definitely motivated me. Like, let me give it a try. Another person you said uh, was motivating in the moment was Drake when he uh, invited you to, to his mansion at the time. Yeah, Do you remember yeah. walking into the house and what, what the vibe was like at that time? Um, well, to be honest, like, at the time, I think the mansion was getting built. So, like, he's so player, he invited me to a hotel. But, like, he got the whole floor, the whole floor. You know, you got, like, yeah, 32, 31. You got, like, probably 20 rooms per, 25 rooms per floor. Yeah. He has the whole floor. You know what I'm saying? He pull up like, you know what I'm saying? He got the robe on, drinking, I think, a latte. <laughs> this I answered the door. Yeah, like, I'm like, <laughs> Drake. Yeah, man. He's full of throat. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So now, nah, but it was a dope experience, man. Uh, we recorded right there on the spot. Um, I forgot who he had engineering, but I was a little, um, I wouldn't say I was like starstruck. I just didn't, I didn't expect Drake to reach out to me when I was in the, when I was in Canada on tour. Oh, that that's was, not yeah, and I like I I didn't take nobody, I didn't tell nobody I was going to took me and my me and my security. We ain't telling nobody. I don't want these things to freak out if I'm yeah, Drake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I was already freaking out. You know what I mean? I kind of wanted one of them lattes too. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I ain't say that. But no, nah, it was cool. It was cool. It was cool. And uh, you know what I mean? Drake was Drake was cool. Yeah, he showed that Canadian hospitality. Yeah, just on some rich shit. He just yeah, bossed yeah. up, like, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Well, I've always wondered with uh, with just coming up and, like you said, you had, you know, friends around you. How did you handle um, maintaining your grounding and having people around you that maybe you came up with uh, throughout your whole life and then you reaching this new height? Yeah. Like, how were you able to bring certain people along, have certain people fall off? Like, how did you deal with the balance of that? Um, dealing with the balance of that was kind of hard because, like, 
a lot of these people are like people you grew up with, and you know, some of them, most of them are, I can't say most of them, but some of them are, are envious, you know what I'm saying? Most of them had better lives than I did growing up with me being the chosen one. Um, I just always look at it like God could have blessed anybody, but he gave it to me, so like, I become mentally strong, you know what I'm saying? Like, it had nothing to do with physical. To wake up every day and to like more like I got it's people that hate me that that doesn't even know me so you know so I have to live with that you know what I'm saying but I'm mentally strong and God put it on the right person's shoulders man you know what I'm saying I'm built for it. Me and uh, Kevin Gates were talking about that in an interview where he said he, a long time for a long time he ran away from yeah. his purpose and ran away from being chosen. Yeah. Like, do you remember when you started to accept? That it was you? Uh, I would say probably now. It's more like this This go around, I'm probably accepting it more than on me. Uh, I try to like, I hate, being, I'm not gonna say I hate being rich on the corn, but I'm only rich on the corn with a mic or when I'm doing interviews or when I'm doing work. Other than that, man, I'm the Quintus Lamar. They call me corn. My, uh, my alias is Richard. So it's like, I'm more of that. You know what I'm saying? But like, this is my job title. I've learned how to d differentiate the two. I learned how to cut them on and cut them off. You know what I'm saying? It's my life. Like, this is God. This is this is God's plan for me. So like, I can't rewrite it. I just gotta roll with the punches, bro. Who who is? Uh, I won't say your full name there. I yeah. might mess it up. But who yeah. is? Let's say Richard without Rich Homie Kwan at your core. Who would you say you? Um, the Quintus Lamar is a loving father. The Quintus Lamar is a, he's a best friend, he's a son, um, he's a brother, uh, he's an innovator, uh, he's a, uh, he's a leader, you know, uh, he's a hero, um, he's also, um, He's a trendsetter, you know. Um, and most importantly, man, he's himself and he does shit his way. That's amazing. Yeah. All right, well, to close out, I, I do want to talk about your music and, you know, yeah. where you're at right now. Um, it feels like you have like a rejuvenated sense of energy and purpose in your life. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure it took you a while to get to that place. Were there things that you were doing over the past few years, whether it be like, introspection or meditation or talking to people that helped you kind of come to grips with where you're at and where you want to be? Um, I would say the, big, the, the, the biggest thing or the, uh, the best thing that helped me to come to grips with who I am and where I am at today is just experience. Like I'm 10 years in, like experience has been my best teacher. Like I've done a lot of things wrong. I'm not perfect, but if I could do anything over, I wouldn't because I wouldn't be here in this spirit today. So I had to go through that to like to be who I am. I'm proud of who I am. I'm proud of my scars. Like it's a lot of relationships I wish I, I would have did. You know what I'm saying? I could do over, but they are what they are. Don't blame me for that. I was young then. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a grown man now. I'm a CEO now. You know what I'm saying? And I'm on my, I'm on my boss shit. Is there anyone in particular you you know would would like to? I guess you can use the platform to say something to, whether it's a relationship that may have uh, rotted over time or maybe yeah. you just wanted to. Um, not, no one in particular. I would just say to DJs and radio personalities. I was an asshole, so to any DJs out there that, you know what I mean, drops I didn't maybe get on time or radio personalities or I didn't show up for, don't fault me for the old me, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know what I'm saying, the new me is, Totally different, totally different. Well, there's, there's one person who recently uh, said something about the old you that I feel like you should get the chance to clarify. It was okay. uh, J.I.D. said that he- Oh yeah, J. Yeah, yeah J.I.D., yeah, J.I.D., yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he said that, uh, I tried to sign him. I, I think he said I sent him a- uh, I think he said disgusting deal, or so, uh, the term uh, he used- But but he did say I sent him paperwork, right? That's yeah, what yeah, he said. Yeah, he said there was like, it, it, it wasn't that, it was like, he, I think his sentiment was, the actual deal, the terms uh -huh. were like either really locking him in or like not the figures that he was looking for. Yeah. But I'm assuming that wasn't your doing. Crazy. I'm finna tell y'all a story. 
We was about to sign. <laughs> Me and Earth Gang was about to sign. Not about to. We did not. We was not about to do it because we saw the deal. We about to, we got offered a deal from Rich Homie Quan. For real? For sure. For sure. That would have been a come up for Rich Homie Quan. <laughs> Bro, the deal was disgusting though. What was the deal? <laughs> <laughs> it was straight disgusting. What I don't even deal? remember it specifically, but I just remember I was like, no. Crack no, sandwiches? No, <laughs> straight crack sandwiches. Do you remember uh, him coming to the meet with you guys and I remember talking to Jay J I D. I remember talking to Jay he's from Atlanta. Yeah. As far as the contract, that's cap. He know that's cap. Like I've never ever sent no contract to no artist. Like if I wanna sign you, I got the best entertainment lawyers in the world. And I I've been in effed up situations, so why would I put an artist in one? But if he can show me a contract that I sent him I give him a million dollars. It's cap. All right. It's cap. Listen, it's, uh, it's out there. I uh, I don't remember if he said that there was an actual contract. But like, but like, but I'm gonna tell you this. I may have said it because at that time, in that time, like, you know, what I'm saying, I was on drugs. Like, I was I was geeked up. Like, I was turned. But as far I think he said, I sent him an actual contract. And that's cap. I've never sent a contract, man. That's cap. Have you seen him around since? Oh no, I haven't. But when I did see him before, it's head nods. It's no yeah, beef. Right. But uh, as far as a, I, someone from my team sent a contract. I give me knowledge, man. It's cap. It's cap. <laughs> Listen, yeah, it's cap. Got, we did have a conversation yeah. about that. Like I say, a comment. But as far as me sending the, nah, man, that ain't even like nah. Nah, I figured I'd give you the chance to clear yeah, it up. It went by clearing it up. He know. <laughs> 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 Shit. <laughs> what about people who have been there for you over yeah. the past, you know, five years, let's say? Yeah. Is there anyone in particular, industry or not, who's really, you know, helped you and stuck by you even when there was side picking and when there was, like, things going on behind the scenes? Yeah, uh, well, it's been more so on artists, like, because a lot of artists, like, you know, they would pick a side. Like, but I said, like, Boosie. Boosie stayed down, been picking on sides. Gotti. Um... um That's probably about it. I don't want to throw nobody under the bus because it was a lot of other artists that were doing it. Yeah. Like, then didn't, didn't pick sides, but a lot of them niggas would, a lot of them niggas pick sides. You know, so. But did you, it seems like you kind of uh, come to peace with Yeah, I don't, I, I don't feel no type of way. You know what I mean? They did what was best for them or what yeah. they thought was best for them. Like, they, like, don't no man control what God got for me, so I wasn't tripping. I mean, I'm a man of God, so like, I wasn't tripping. I knew what God had for me. I knew I wasn't done. So you're lost, not mine. <laughs> well, speaking of death, do you believe in re reincarnation and past lives at all? Oh, that's too political. That's spiritual. It's spiritual. <laughs> but I don't know, man, because that shit be making my flesh crawl. <laughs> you don't like to think about it? Oh, well, I don't know. Reincarnation. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, where you going? Where you going there with it first? I was just gonna see what you, you know, if you thought maybe you you connected to certain things in this life that you don't know why. Because from like for me, for example, yeah. I always connected to like Egyptian stuff. Okay. Like I love yeah. Egypt and studying yeah. it, and yeah. to me that okay. feels like okay, maybe I feel I was you on there that. In the past okay, life, I you feel know? you on that. Yeah, I feel you on that. I do, I do. Okay, so that so <laughs> the way you broke it down, yeah. But I ain't gonna tell you what I be getting okay. in, but yeah, there are <laughs> cause yeah, because I be I be I be on YouTube University <laughs> going crazy, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, I do feel like yeah, I've been here before, YouTube. and I got an old soul, so yeah. you know what I mean, so yeah, I definitely feel like I've been here before. I will to to close off. You talk about YouTube University. Somebody's watching this, and this is their YouTube University. Yeah. So, is there one lesson from Rich Homie Kwan that you've learned over your life and career so far that that one person watching? that you want to share with them? Um, I would say to anybody watching this right now, uh, if you have a goal out there, um, never let no one entice your mind. Make sure it's something you want to do. And if it's something you want to do, get around some people who believe in you more than you believe in yourself. Because there's going to be a lot of days where you don't want to do it, but I feel like your team is a representation of you. And if they love you, like they say they love you, you'll win.
Yes, sir. Well, this is Rich Elvin calling Hip Hop DX. We appreciate your time, your energy, and uh, you know, I like to give people their flowers while I'm in front of them. So I just want to let you know, like man to man, I, you know, respect everything you've done and hip hop as a whole. Is thankful for everything you've contributed and continue. To I appreciate that. I ain't really good with accepting stuff like that, but thank you, man. I hear it a lot, but it's still so much I haven't done. It's still so much I'm yet to do. Yeah. Tell me that. 10 years from now. Deal. My nigga. We'll see you there. Oh, and real quick, if you want to just say, first time I'm here is Hip Hop DX. I did. All right. Hey, what it do? Y'all already know it's the homie, the richest corn, of course. And right now, you're with Hip Hop DX. Three words. Rich homie, baby.